Hello there, friendly neighbors, and welcome back to our channel. I feel like you've been a little deficient in vitamin A lately, as in vitamin Andromeda. My uh, heater and my computer have decided that they want to be very, very noisy for the recording of this video, so there's probably a lot of background noise happening right now. That made it worse. For today's video, I'm going to be continuing my train of raw feeding themed videos, and we're gonna be talking about balanced grinds and how to know if the grind you're feeding your ferret is actually balanced. For anyone who is unfamiliar with the world of raw, essentially what grinds are is they are a mixture of all of the muscle, bone, and organs that animals like cats, dogs, and ferrets need in a raw diet, grounded up into a minced meat sort of consistency type patty thing. Grinds are a really convenient and easy way to feed your ferrets raw because when you're feeding grinds, so long as you know the grind you're feeding is balanced, you don't have to worry about doing personal balance yourself like you would with a Frankenprey based raw feeding system thing. In this video, I'm going to be covering the basic rules that you should be following for whatever grind you are deciding to feed, the 80-10-10 ratio, what organ meats are and aren't suitable in grinds, misconceptions about whole prey grinds, and misconceptions about taurine deficiencies. So that's quite a lot to unpack, but I will have timestamps down below for everything that I'm talking about if you want to skip to a specific part or if you're coming to rewatch a specific part so that you know what you're coming for and you don't have to listen to this part, because who wants to listen to this part? Certainly not me. For today's video, I am going to be using Big Country Raw as an example for a lot of the things I'm talking about. Big Country Raw is a brand that I'm quite familiar with because I do feed some of their grinds to my ferrets. My ferrets don't really like red meat, so the only way that I can convince them to eat their red meat is by giving it to them in the form of a grind. But that's just how they are because they're picky. Welcome to the world of ferrets. They're also a great example for me to use because they have a lot of different products, some of which are safe for ferrets and follow the guidelines I'm going to be talking about, and others which are not for various reasons, which I will be explaining to you. This is why it's a good example. So we're going to be going through eight different rules that you should be following when it comes to looking for which brand of grind you want to be feeding your ferrets. Let's do that right now. The first rule is, if you are unsure about something, reach out. If you're looking at a raw food and they don't have a way to contact the company, whether that's a phone number or an email address, I really wouldn't recommend feeding it because that just means it's kind of unreliable and you're not really gonna know who to turn to when you have questions. It's good to have questions. Don't feel bad about having questions. I really like Big Country Raw because they are extremely open to answering questions that I have. I have emailed them and used their chat system on their website numerous times for sometimes really stupid, dumb questions that I just want the answers for. So don't feel like you can't reach out to companies because the reason they put their phone numbers and email addresses is specifically so that you can ask them questions. Questions are great. We all learn by asking questions. To sort of branch off of that, the second rule is that you should not trust a company that isn't willing to disclose information, especially when it comes to the balance of their food. If you ask a raw food company a question and their answer to you is, Trust me, it's balanced, I know. Do not trust that food. In my opinion, raw companies should be as transparent as physically possible with their customers, and any company that isn't is not trustworthy. There are a couple different Canadian raw food brands that I've tried to reach out to, and they either never reply to my emails or don't give me the answers that I'm looking for and instead will say, oh, it's organ but don't continue to specify what type of organ. It's just not trustworthy. And if they aren't willing to tell you, you're not gonna know. And if you don't know what you're feeding your ferrets, that's kind of dangerous. The third rule is that of variety. It's really important when you're feeding raw, whether that's through grinds, whole prey, or franken prey, that you are giving your ferret a variety of different types of foods. The general rule of thumb is to make sure they're getting protein from four different sources. And I like to recommend making at least one of those a red meat source. Each different type of animal has different nutrient levels. So ferrets will get different things from each animal that they're eating. In my opinion, more is better. When I was feeding grinds, my ferrets were on six different types of proteins just because they were willing to eat most of them. And if I have to go buy raw food, I may as well buy different types of raw food. I lost count, but I think this is the fourth rule. If your ferrets don't like something, try mixing it. I found that my ferrets really did not like red meat. So when I was first introducing it to them, I had to mix it in with a chicken grind and then they were willing to eat it. 
Actually, one of the things I started doing when I was feeding grinds is I would mix all of the different grinds together so that every meal they were getting pretty much the same tasting thing and they warmed up to it a lot easier and I found that they were eating a little bit more. Some of the grinds you can buy actually are pre-mixed with different proteins. Big Country Raw has a couple different mixes that they call their blends. They have four different ones from what I remember and I just know that their country blend is the only one that's actually ferret safe because it follows the ratio that I'm going to be going into later. The fifth rule, I think I'm back on track, is that the grinds you're buying should not have any fruits, vegetables, or or other additives in them. You want something that is strictly organ meat and bone with absolutely nothing else added to it because that kind of defeats the point of you feeding them raw if you're, they're still gonna be eating carbs. Like, that's why we feed raw, to avoid the carbs. To use Big Country Raw as an example, they have two different strains of their grinds. They have their pure formulas and their dinners. Their dinners are geared towards dogs because they contain a certain amount of fruits and vegetables in each one, but the pure formulas are only bone, meat, and organ. The sixth rule, you want nothing cooked in your grinds. Big Country Raw does have a kangaroo grind, but for some reason the liver in it is cooked liver. I'm really not sure why I didn't dig too deep into it because it doesn't matter since it's clearly unsafe for ferrets, but my theory is just that it has to do with resourcing. Big Country Raw sources most of their meat from Canada, but their kangaroo is imported from Australia. So maybe it just has to do with importing meat laws. Maybe the liver has to be cooked before it comes. I really don't know, but just make sure none of the meat is cooked is what I'm trying to say. The seventh rule is that if there's anything unspecified in the grind, you should not be feeding it. For example, Big Country Raw has a rabbit grind, but the organs that they use for it are unspecified and they're only listed as rabbit organ. This is because they can never guarantee exactly what organs it is inside of the food because it depends on what they're able to get in at a certain time. One time you buy it, it might be liver. The next time you buy it, it might be kidney. Probably has to do with how small rabbit organs are and how they're hard to source. So if you encounter a grind like that, I would advise against feeding it just because you never really know. The eighth and final rule is that the grinds you're feeding should follow the 80-10-10 balance, which is what my next segment is all about. What a nice little segue, huh? We got a good segue to the next segment. A seg segment segue. A seg -mue. So let's do some talking about the 80-10-10 ratio. 80-10-10 is a ratio that most raw feeders go by, whether you're feeding Franken-Prey or grinds. It's essentially a breakdown of the average amount of bone, meat, and organ in a live, real animal. By using this ratio, we're able to mimic a whole prey diet and ensure that your ferrets are getting the proper amount of nutrients that they need from everything that they need it from. Though this ratio is called the 80-10-10, it actually breaks down further than that. I'm not sure why we still call it the 80-10-10 when actually it should be called the 70-10-10-5-5. I don't know, that's just what we call it. And I think it's sometimes a little bit misleading. So basically what they're trying to say with an 80-10-10 is that 80% of your ferret's food should be muscle, 10% should be bone, and 10% should be organ. But the reason I like to break it down into 70-10-10-5-5 is that that 80% muscle you should be feeding actually breaks down into 70% muscle, 10% heart. The 10% bone stays the same, but the 10% organ actually translates to 5% liver and 5% other secreting organ. So the 80-10-10 can just be a little bit misleading if you don't understand that because someone could easily just accidentally not feed heart and feed strictly muscle meat. And the same can be said for the organ. They could feed strictly liver while skipping out on the other secreting organ. Big Country Raw has several grinds that follow this exact ratio, these grinds being their pure lamb, pure beef, and pure pork grinds. It is worth noting that in order to find out if these grinds actually followed the exact ratio, I did have to reach out to Big Country Raw. As you can see on their ingredients list, they don't state what percent of their food each of these ingredients is, so that's something you might need to reach out to the raw supplier to ask about. Which again, talk to people. It's okay to ask questions. Please ask questions. Now let's look really quickly into that 5% secreting organ that I mentioned because this is something that some grind companies don't do properly. There are lots of different organs that are considered secreting organs, the most common ones being kidney, spleen, brain, testicle, uterus, thyroid, gallbladder, thymus, and parathyroid. I don't really know what a parathyroid is because I've never experienced it before, but I kind of feel smart saying it. So that's why I said it. But there are a few things that aren't considered organs that for some reason, some raw food companies say are organs. The biggest of these being tripe, lung, and gizzards. 
All of these are considered muscle meats, and I don't know where the misconception comes from that they are secreting organ. They are still perfectly safe to feed your ferrets, but make sure that if you're buying a grind, it doesn't consider these as organ because then your grind isn't gonna be balanced. Another thing that some grinds try to consider as organ is stomach and intestines. Technically, yes, intestines are secreting organs, but they don't have nearly as much nutrition as the other secreting organs that I listed. Also in the wild, polecats generally choose to not eat these organs just because there's a lot of digestion and grossness going on in there. That's not to say they're unsafe to feed your ferrets. A lot of people feeding whole prey will present these to their ferrets. Some ferrets eat them, some ferrets don't. But personally, I just don't consider these to be secreting organs and that's just my opinion. Um, and as I said before, it's my channel and I get to choose the opinion, so. I wanna take a little bit of time to talk about whole prey grinds because in my experience, there's a lot of misconception about what the idea of a whole prey grind is. And I think that that can be potentially dangerous to raw feeders. So a whole prey grind sort of branches off of the idea that the 80-10-10 ratio gives us. The 80-10-10 ratio comes from the ratio of organ to meat to muscle in an animal. So while those grinds are manually balanced, a whole prey grind literally just takes the entire animal and grinds it up. Carnivora is a super well-known Canadian raw food brand. They have become well-known for their whole animal grinds in which they claim that they are completely balanced because they are using the whole animal. The problem is when you look at the ingredients of these whole animal grinds, it doesn't actually contain the whole animal. On all of the grinds, except for their steelhead trout grind, it says that the grind does not contain the animal's feet or head, both of which are very important sources of nutrition for an animal. The head contains the brain and tongue, brain being a secreting organ and tongue being a super good source of taurine, and feet being an amazing source of bone. So it's extremely misleading to say that this is a whole animal grind, but it doesn't have the whole animal in it. I have absolutely nothing wrong with whole animal grinds that truly are the whole animal, but I really recommend that if you are looking at a grind that markets itself that way, that you reach out to the supplier and double check that that is in fact the case. The last thing I want to talk about today is a misconception about taurine deficiency. Taurine is an essential amino acid for obligate carnivores like ferrets and cats, and it affects the eye, heart, immune system, blood clotting, and reproductive system. It's something that obligate carnivores like cats and ferrets can't manufacture for themselves, so the only way that they can get it is by getting it through their food. Taurine is prominent in pretty much every source of meat, but it's especially prominent in working muscles. The heart is the biggest source of taurine, which is why when you are doing an 80-10-10 ratio, it's so important that 10% of your ferret's diet is heart to make sure that they're getting the appropriate amount of taurine. Small poultry animals tend to have a little bit more taurine in their hearts just because their hearts beat a lot faster, because like me, they are constantly filled with anxiety. When feeding a dry kibble or a canned wet food, this food has been cooked and because of that, a lot of the taurine has depleted because that's what happens when taurine is cooked. So if you look on the ingredients of a dry or a wet canned food, you'll see that it's artificially added back into the food in order to meet AFCO standards. I have seen a very common misconception about taurine in ground foods. The issue with grinding up heart or muscles that have taurine in it is that it causes taurine to oxidize. When you grind it up, it increases the surface area of the food, therefore oxygen gets to it easier, therefore it oxidizes, which also depletes the amount of taurine in something. It's really important to note, the information that I was finding on this did come from a kind of conjumbled mix of sources. So I did find some information on oxidization on Perfectly Rawsome, which I do consider to be a relatively reputable source. But a lot of the places that were like sharing panic over this potential lack of taurine were just from like people's personal blogs from the early 2000s, which, you know, this kind of proves is not a great place to get your information, especially when it comes to nutrition, because who knows where these people get this information and it's just highly misleading. Because of this, at four o'clock in the morning last night, I went into a huge panic while doing research for this video because I was concerned that grinds then are completely taurine deficient since all the taurine in it has oxidized. The problem is grinding up heart and muscle that has taurine in it, though it does cause the taurine to oxidize, it doesn't cause it to oxidize enough that the food is then completely deficient in taurine. It just gets rid of a little bit of it, really. 
So I'm going to show you guys some math that you can use to prove how much taurine is in the grind that you're feeding your ferret based on the nutritional analysis that should be available either on the website or on the food that you're buying. There isn't really a proven universal number for how much taurine ferrets need daily, but the AFCO minimum for cat food, which we can generally apply to ferrets, is 0.2%. Additionally, in the third edition of Biology and Disease of the Ferrets, ferrets are estimated to need 0.25% of their daily diet to contain taurine. So based on these two numbers, I think it's safe to say that we can aim for something around there. Now I'm going to be using the Big Country Raw Pure Lamb Grinds as an example because, like I said, that's the one that I feed to my ferrets. Unfortunately, in order to find the taurine content for your grind, you can't just look at the nutritional analysis. If you do that, you're going to think that your food is really low in taurine. So if you look at the Lamb Grind one, it says that these grinds contain 0.1 grams of taurine for every 100 grams, meaning that they are 0.1% taurine, which, if you know anything about numbers, you'll realize is quite a bit lower than the 0.2% standard. Thankfully for your ferrets, that doesn't mean that it only contains 0.1% taurine, it actually contains quite a little bit more than that. In order to figure out how much taurine is actually in the food, you need to figure out the dry matter basis, which is what that AFCO 0.2% is based on. The dry matter basis is basically how much of an ingredient is in a certain type of food when it doesn't have any moisture, aka it's dry. The reason you have to do this is that it's pretty impossible to compare a dry food, which doesn't have very much water, to a wet food, which, surprise surprise, has a lot of water. Unless we get rid of the biggest thing that makes them different, which, believe it or not, is water. Thankfully for you guys and everyone involved, the math for that is relatively easy. Basically all you have to do is you have to take the percent of the ingredient, so in the case of the lamb grinds that's a 0.1, and you're going to divide that by 100% minus whatever the moisture content is. Now as you can see that calculates out to be about 0.29%, which again if you know anything about numbers is higher than the 0.2% taurine standard. And of course, you know, when you're feeding this to your ferrets it's going to sit out for a little longer and it's gonna oxidize a bit but still in my opinion it's just not gonna oxidize enough for that food to then be completely deficient in taurine. Taurine is in literally every single source of meat it just happens to be a little bit higher in heart and working muscle. I just really don't think this is worth panicking over especially if you have that 10% in there. I did do the math for most of the grinds on the Big Country Raw website. I got through nine of them and then I was like, I'm tired of doing this. My evidence is conclusive. The evidence that I found was that all of the grinds either were very, very slightly lower than that 0.2% or quite a bit over it. So because of this, it leads me to believe that by giving your ferrets variety, which as I said earlier, was really important for a raw diet, you are able to meet that minimum requirement of how much taurine your ferret needs. If you are still concerned about taurine deficiency in your grinds, you can choose to supplement taurine. You have two different options with that. You can either buy a taurine supplement either in a powder or a liquid form, although try to make sure that the ingredients on it are mostly taurine. I know Big Country Raw sells one. It's 98% taurine and 2% trace minerals. There are some taurine supplements you can find that have vegetable glycerin and stuff in it. I just don't really recommend feeding these because we want to avoid fruits and veggies when we're feeding our ferrets. The second option, which I consider to be a little bit better is to just give your ferrets some raw chicken hearts every once in a while. They make really great training treats. My ferrets really like them and they're super easy to get even if you live somewhere where raw feeding isn't super common. I can almost guarantee you that your grocery store is going to carry whole frozen chicken hearts. The great thing with taurine is that it's pretty hard to over supplement it. Taurine is water soluble so what that means is if a ferret eats too much taurine they will just pass it through their urine and nothing's going to happen. There are actually no known cases of cats or ferrets getting too much taurine so that leads me to to believe unless your ferret's diet is like 80% heart you're probably gonna be fine so in conclusion make sure that any grinds you are gonna be feeding your ferrets follow the 80 10 10 or 70 10 10 5 5 balanced ratio or they are whole prey grinds that are actually whole prey grinds it's grinding my gears how many of them aren't actually whole prey grinds. Don't call yourself something you aren't. Contact your raw food supplier if you have questions or if you want clarification on something. There is nothing wrong with asking questions. They should be more than happy to answer them for you. And do not cry about taurine at four o'clock in the morning like I did. Because you know what? It's okay. 
it's amazing what you can do when you look up factual evidence instead of someone's blogspot post from 2008. Speaking of resources, I have those in the description. I don't think I mentioned that earlier. I hope this guide was helpful and useful to anyone who wants to feed grinds. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot me a DM on Instagram, or better yet, if you are over the age of 16, join my Discord server. I have lots of raw feeders in there who are very experienced, and I'm on there a lot too because I like to talk to people. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe because by doing all of those things, you too can become a citizen of the friendly neighborhood. I will see you guys next week when I do another video on raw feeding because as I said last video, I sometimes plan ahead. Not often, but you know, sometimes we do be doing that. I'm gonna leave now. My brain is fried. I don't know if you guys can tell. Um, I think I need a bubble bath. I'm gonna go take a bubble bath. See you guys next week. I deserve it, I really do. I deserve it this time. I think I got some new bath salts too. Okay, bye.